Kia ora, good evening. Details of the inaugural A to B Ocean Race are being put to the public in Southland this week, with event organisers fronting two public meetings in Bluff and in Vicargill to let the public know what's planned and to answer questions. Sarah Bedford has the story. The organisers of the Auckland to Bluff Ocean Race are in the south talking to the public about the inaugural event being held in February next year. At a media briefing this morning, A to B principal Murray Francis said public meetings are being held to keep the community informed and to hear what they have to say. Oh, we love public input on what's happening because with public engagement uh, it comes a successful event, basically. That's what we want. Nine Australasian boats have put forward expressions of interest and Mr Francis says he's also hoping to attract international entries. Organisers are hoping for 30 boats, a target he's confident of reaching. SMC events manager Dave Mee says infrastructure at Bluff has been a huge challenge. The infrastructure at Bluff is probably the biggest challenge because it's an on-the-water on event and it's very, very expensive boats that are going to be mooring up in the harbour and we need to make sure that one, it's safe for the boats and secondly, they don't get damaged. Although a new solution has been put forward for mooring boats called fendering, which will allow yachts to dock at Southport. Invercargill City Council is putting $280,000 towards the event, but Auckland City Council has not made any financial contribution, although it's providing some services at no cost. The cycle in terms of the funding cycle in Auckland is a lot more complex and because there's so many more events it's hard to make sure you're in on the ground floor. Um, we've certainly been given the indication that they do want to support it and they, they would be interested in putting funding in the future. Um, the second part to that is that um, we expect most of the corporate funding to come from the Auckland region. And lastly, the costs of being in Auckland in terms of the race start are nominal versus the cost of being here. Program Director Craig Soso says the event will have economic benefits for the province. He says a festival is also planned to coincide with the conclusion of the race, which should draw people from outside Southland and Otago. We see the bluff side of things being really family orientated, so activities both on the water and on the land. On the water um, involving the Bluff Yacht Club and Yachting New Zealand have a go sailing. Um, and other things on the water that we might be able to put down there that can be you know, a regular feature over that five, six, seven days. On the land, things that in, um, excite families around the region to want to come and check out. So all that stuff happening in Bluff and then working with other organise, organisers in Bluff to enhance that festival down there and then with organisers in McCargill around what other activities you can put together as a, a big festival package that will attract people from outside the region. A lot of the festival costs are accounted for in the current budget, but more may be needed from those who take part in the festival. A lot of that festival stuff is already budgeted for. It's in our budget at the moment. Um, in terms of partnering with other organisations, it's in, it's, it would be in, up to them you know, how they would see benefit to us working co collaboratively to have a, a larger festival that other people would want to come down to check out. A public meeting on the race is being held in Invercargill at the Civic Theatre at 5.30 this evening. Sarah Bedford, South Today News. The future of Solid Energy's briquette processing plant at Matora near Gore remains uncertain, but an announcement is expected this week. The recently commissioned $25 million plant, plant is one of several of the debt-laden state-owned enterprises' assets under review. Solid Energy, which has almost $390 million in debt, had intended to form a joint venture with Australian company GTL Energy to manage briquette production at the plant. Staff were consulted about transferring to the company New Zealand subsidiary, but now the future of the plant remains uncertain. In a bid to reduce debt, the company is selling around 3,500 hectares of resource-rich land in the area, with several decades of supply for conversion technologies, including making urea fertiliser. A group leading legal action against banks over penalty fees has announced ANZ will be the first bank it files court action against. The Fair Play on Fees legal team has announced it will file court documents next week against ANZ, ANZ Bank New Zealand. The case will claim a repayment of default fees charged by ANZ and its former subsidiary National Bank over the past six years. Fair Play on Fees lawyer Adam Hooker says the launch of Fair Play on Fees in March saw, the more, saw more than 24,000 people sign up to claim back fees and more than 11,000 are ANZ customers. He says court documents will be launched next Tuesday. 
Snow could fall to sea level around Invercargill in the next few days with an Arctic blast set to hit the country. A big storm is expected to affect the whole country with sub-zero temperatures and snow expected tomorrow night and into Thursday in the south. 45 South meteorologist Andy Fraser says roads will likely be affected or closed due to snow in northern parts of Southland and snow could reach sea level around Invercargill. Heading into the shortest day, Gore Police Senior Sergeant Richard McPhail says as weather deteriorates, motorists should check road conditions and weigh up the need to travel. Stay with us after the break. Why Invercargill Women's Refuge is concerned about a surge in cases. Welcome back. A surge in the number of cases relating to the synthetic cannabis product K2 is causing concern at Invercargill's Women's Refuge. Sarah Bedford spoke to coordinator Kathy Robertson about the rise in cases. So a lot of the people that have contacted us, um, it's been with partners and other family members, have been hugely affected um, by the use of K2. How concerning is that for you? It is really concerning because the violence has got worse and the people are saying that their partners and family members, you know, usually they can sometimes talk to them and you know, calm them down a bit, but they can't do that, they can't seem to get through to them at all. Now this seems to be a growing problem that you're seeing? It has been of late, yes. I'd say in the last six weeks, two months, we've seen a huge um, increase in the numbers of um, women that we've had come through that have been affected by this. Now what kind of uh, impacts do, do you see uh, the drug having on, on the people who are coming in for help? Um, well, the violence has increased um, and financial pressures, yeah, there's a lot of money being spent on it um, and, you know, the people are saying that, you know, they're pinching stuff to go and pawn it and that as well if they can't get the money on the cash. Now, it's not just uh, partners that, that are causing problems here, you're seeing other family members being affected as well. Yes, we're seeing grandparents that have been affected by, you know, the grandchildren coming and insisting on money, getting money off them and that to buy it. Um, there's parents that we're dealing with and, you know, even, you know, sisters of, um, you know, young men and that, that are being affected by this drug. How worried are you that the, the situation will continue to worsen? It is really worrying um, and it's so easy for people to get hold of, that's the, you know, that's the really hard thing and um, you know, people think, oh well it's legal so it's, it's fine, we can, you know, it's fine to have it so we can. Is it adding extra pressure for you at Women's Refuge? Yes, it has certainly brought in a lot more cases and for some reason just of recently. Now is there anything that you're doing or that you can do or hope to do to try and address the issue? All we can do is be, you know, we're trying to work closely with the police and that to help the people that we're dealing with. A new roundabout designed to increase safety at the eastern entrance to Invercargill is close to completion. The $850,000 project is largely completed and is expected to reduce the crash rate at the intersection of Tay and, and Racecourse and Rockdale Roads. Simon Underwood from the New Zealand Transport Agency says there have been more than 40 crashes at the intersection in the past decade, with nearly half of these causing injury. Work including footpaths, landscaping and car parking at nearby shops is expected to be completed in the next two weeks. More than 600 women from Whangarei to Bluff have descended on the Ascot Park Hotel for the New Zealand Federation of Women's Institute's 92nd Annual General Meeting. I spoke to National President Jeanette Andrews about the Institute and how it fits in today's society. We're probably a lot older age group than what um, they were at the beginning. Although in saying that, uh, we are now trying to get evening groups set up for younger women and the working women to be able to participate in our organisation. What um, sorts of things would people get out of joining a group like this? Certainly learn skills through leadership and craft and um, really anything that they would like to learn, we, we do have the skills in our organisation. Have you found in more recent years that there's been a need for teaching these skills to women, younger women? There is a need out there and some women are asking, some of the younger women are now asking for help from our members. So that's why we're getting some younger ones joining with our elder women to um, get that experience. Can you give us some examples of what types of things they would be, what information they're sharing? 
Well, just a simple thing like we've had a, a request for somebody to teach them how to read a crochet pattern, um, how to make a decent sponge, how to make a decent casserole. Um, everyday things that are everyday to us, but to the young people, obviously they haven't had those same teaching skills that we did. Do you think that can be put down to the fact that um, the, the perhaps generations have, have been working now and, and those skills are being lost? Absolutely, yes it is down to the working. I think working mothers don't have time now, they rush home from work and have got family and gym and take the children everywhere so there's just no time, not like it was years ago. What sorts of changing outlooks or aims have you created over the last um, perhaps 10 years in this group? We are trying now to lobby the government um, of the day of issues that we um, strongly believe in. We did have a little say in the, um, the grandparents receiving payment for looking after grandchildren. Us along with other organisations had a say and put in our protest on that one. We've put in a submission for the postal services. We're a little bit concerned about the uh, rural people missing out on, um, on their um, deliveries and things. And we are at this currently watching the hospital food service that they're trying to centralise. We are actually watching to see what's going to happen with that because well, we will be voicing our disapproval on that one. And that's it from the news team. Coming up in sport, the Southern Steel travelled to Perth to take on the fever. From the news team, good night.